I'd like to give you some tips on things that you should avoid if you're having problems with your pool water. So if you're having problems with your pool water, the first thing I want you to avoid is doing nothing. If you have a problem, there's, there's something that's getting worse day by day here, maybe even hour by hour, and doing nothing or putting off, you know, getting around to fixing this is substantially going to make it more difficult to actually resolve the problem. So this is just another one of those times in life where doing nothing is not the right solution. So where is this process going to start? It, it's going to start with water testing. You need to know what's going on in the water. If you don't know what the different numerical values are, for the water chemistry, you're not going to be able to go about finding what's wrong with it and then fixing it. So here's something that I don't want you to do. I don't want you to mix and match water chemistry advice. You should take a water sample, you should either test it yourself or go to a water lab, get a free water test, and they will give you instructions on how to fix your water. What I don't want you to do is take that instruction sheet home, do maybe some or part of it, but then also your neighbor Bob was saying he uses this particular product, add some of this too, and that should fix your problem because his pool always looks great. Don't do that. When you start mixing and matching the advice, you can start to get into problems in terms of not just direct chemical conflict, which is definitely a concern as well, but just in general, there's systems and processes in place for the scientific care of the water, you know, water chemistry, and just mixing and matching random stuff into your technical process is more likely to introduce a problem than it is more likely to resolve a problem. So along these lines of things that you shouldn't be doing, here's another thing I don't want you to do. I don't want you to add any chemicals to the water that you don't really know what it does. So for example, you might see a product called Clarifier and you might be looking at some cloudy water thinking, you know, it could be better if it was clarified a little bit. Don't add that product because while the name might represent, uh, you know, what's what the chemical does in the water, it doesn't always, you know, the names aren't always a, a direct instruction of what it's going to do in the water. And further to that, there's times and pools that you wouldn't want to add certain things to. If you put the wrong, you know, um, flocking agent into a pool, you could mess up your filter. If you have the wrong kind of filter, like there's stuff that you have to know before you just adding chemicals to the water. It would be a big mistake and something I don't want you to do. If you're having trouble with your water chemistry, there is a specific right move for each situation you're in. And if you don't really know what's going on in the water or you don't really know what a particular chemical does, what are the chances it's the exact right move to make at the exact right time? It's pretty low. You shouldn't do that. And that brings me to my last point of the things that I don't want you to do when you're having a problem with your water chemistry. I would say like half of the pool owners out there who are having a problem with water chemistry kind of try something with the water chemistry, doesn't fix it, maybe I need to replace the filter. Don't replace your filter. Yes, filters need to be replaced periodically, but most likely the filter is not causing this. The filter being the problem for a water chemistry problem is the vast minority versus the vast majority, which would just boil down to water chemistry fundamentals. Maybe I could say clean the filter. That would be a good idea. Replace your filter entirely. Not really a fan of that unless there's some sort of symptom here that leads you to believe this filter has got a deficiency of some kind. Okay, let's talk about that. If you're just, you know, grasping at straws here and you're like, I don't know, maybe we need a new filter. Don't do that. Do clean your filter. If it's a cartridge filter, degrease the elements and then rinse them off. If you have a sand filter, you might just be thinking backwash, right? Uh -uh. What you should do is you should degrease the sand filter and then backwash it. And that's like maybe one of those secret little hints that a, a lot of people don't know about. Sand filters are super common. The most common pool filter there is. And the amount of pool owners who actually degrease their sand media is almost none, well less than 1%. And that's just because nobody really tells you to do that. But for the same reasons you would need to degrease a cartridge filter, you should degrease a sand filter because they get just like congealed grease inside them from all of, you know, the hairspray and suntan lotions and sweat and things like that in the pool. Not all of that goes away with the backwash process unless you use this degreaser to kind of like emulsify the grease and get it all liquidy so you can wash it away. And if you haven't been doing that with your sand filter, that's something that I would recommend to do. But replacing your filter altogether 
just because you're having a water chemistry problem, that is definitely far down the list, certainly not my first move. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.